day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. So, without the regeneration, without the renewing your mind, <laughs> without the renewing of the mind, without the rebirth, I mean, being born again, yes, that's yes. not a part of our psyche. It's not a part of our makeup. The no. fallen nature does not and cannot comply with that. No. So, I guess our, our initial, our initial conversation with the world system is not you need to love each other, but that you need to get saved. Because yes. if we're asking them to to love each other and they don't they don't have the love of God in them. It's not something they're gonna be able to pull off. Well you know so, and, and again for me it's, it's still a matter of, of, of effectively pro propagating the gospel in a small span of time. What am I gonna focus on? I could tell the world that they need to love one what the world needs now is love, sweet love, but it doesn't work because the world doesn't have love, sweet love in it. I so my first conversation with them would be you need to get Jesus, you need to be born again, you need to come into the kingdom, and then we can start talking about the love in the Kumbaya moments. But that is the love. That, that, that is love. Because the, when you said we need to, 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 to introduce them to Christ, you're introducing them to love. You are. So, so and, and God is love. So that's, that, that is the foundation. Yeah, the, the the gospel, the gospel is love. Yeah, love for mankind. What God did for mankind by the love He had for he, mankind. He demonstrated. So, so that is demonstrating love to them. That if the Holy Spirit is ministering to that person, they can receive that word, which is the faith that they need to be transformed into this world to have their spirit transformed because without faith they can't believe in jesus christ hey let me interject right quick too <clears throat> um i'm going to piggyback a little bit off of what the elder is saying and, and elder you help help me uh, to see if i'm uh seeing this the way that you're maybe trying to say it now what i did is, is while you guys were talking about that for some reason i went to revelation and i wanted to look at uh remind myself about what jesus was saying concerning the churches okay i'm just going to go with ephesus right now let's just say that that um in america for instance we see ourselves like the church of ephesus we've done all of these things um now i know we've got problems but we've done all of these things um uh, 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 shown all and demonstrated all these these good good works, right? But Jesus said to them, "Still, but he still has a he still has a problem with you." And, and that is is that, and this is where I'm thinking, Elder, you're you're saying to me anyway, is that but we forgot the first love. Yes, sir. Wait, 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 wait. He, he later says, yeah. and if you don't basically get it right, he will remove that candlestick uh -huh. and so that's kind of how i see you know us in america you know we we um uh, we call this democracy a um you know it's an experiment and, and and we we were we were founded on christian principles and and i know there's a lot to say about that uh, because you know there's just those challenges because of the carnality that that uh, you know many people were, were still in right but Elder, is that where you kind of, you know, help me, is that where you're kind of coming from? Because see, I, I, I guess when I'm looking at all of this, for all of us who are saying we're Christians, you know, when he spoke to, the, when when he, God was talking about the, the through John, the, the seven churches, you know, he was, it was explaining uh, the, the our disposition, was he not? It's like, you know, some of you are here, 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 and, and I'm, uh, I'm, I've just figured, hey, this, I took the first one, Ephesus, and said, well, maybe that's where America is at, because you know we—I mean, we are a a giving nation. You know, we do contribute, but we but we as a nation are not contributing based on our first love. We're doing it because we are great. We are this. We are that. We are high minded. We, we we're prideful, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so, uh, help me out, Elder. Um, you know, honestly speaking, to me, this democracy or this democratic republic is just as bad as any other government on the planet. 
the only thing that actually undergirded it was the, was the Spirit of God that was in it at the time of the inception. Our knowledge of God and our relationship with God is the thing that breathes life into what we're doing because we are people who are able to govern themselves, but we, our hearts are corrupt. And so what we'll see is that a self-governing people without the love of God in them with corrupted uh, hearts will, will, will bring a nation to its demise quicker than any other. Because you have everybody with an opinion, and we're seeing that being, you know, voiced now on the on the on the, on the, on the airwaves and the social media. Everybody's lying. I mean, it's just a host of lies out there, and it's, it's almost impossible to discern the truth because we have the right to voice our opinion. We have the right to say this. We have the right to do this. Thousands of people have died because somebody was lying, and then somebody else believed it. So them. without they want to believe. Some people want to want to believe stuff, right? They, they, they want to believe a lot. I mean, they, they really do. <laughs> they so do. With, without Christ in us, or with a Christ as the foundation of this democracy, this democracy is done in, it's through, it's finished. Uh, because we, we are going to make unrighteous decisions. We are going to inherently do the wrong thing. And we're seeing that manifest out there now. So when I go to the, when I come to the United States of America, speak to them and say, we need to improve this, this, and this. It's, it's a vain conversation because they don't have the them to do it. The thing that the United States of America really needs now is to solidify a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, if we don't do that, and, and, and I think, as you mentioned, the churches, I agree with you 100% because judgment shall begin in the household of God. The slide of the United States of America has a lot to do with, I believe, the, the slide of the church. The church of America moved away from Christ. And as the church moved away from Christ, the society began to reflect the shift even greatly greater. So we don't propagate Christ. King's contribution to, I think, the man's experience of history is the fact that he put us in a position where we could prove that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The work he did concerning civil rights did not necessarily improve the society. It just made it more it made it easier for us to show our level of decadence and immorality. Mm -hmm. That's that what actually happened in the United States of America. We, even as we, we rose to the office of the presidency, we still brought homosexuality into the top of it. Well, I, 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 I want to do, I want to put that as first. We, when we sit there and said, we want to be first. And I'm talking about, we'll look after ourselves first. We're not, we, we focus on the wrong thing. God should be first, which is what your Ephesus was talking about when you was reading that, Church of Ephesus. Uh, also, the answer to Brother Jackson is, Brother El Brother El Jones was saying that you need to get, get people saved. He pointed in the Ephesus, the Church of Ephesus, those are saved people, right? Those are saved people. Those are not, they're not the world. Those are saved people. But they, what they do wrong, they forgot the first love. Nationalism is nationalism is 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 focusing it the wrong way. Nationalism, forget nationalism. Put God first, glorify God, allow Him to be the whole purpose of why this is a Christian nation. Hallelujah. This is a Christian Hallelujah. Nation, and we're the light of this world. And we're supposed to show the light in the love of Christ. Amen? Yeah. If, we, Amen. if we forget our first love, that's what I'm trying to say. That. If we forget our first love, then now you could be removed from your position. Right, right, if right. Be, if you're trying to be great in your flesh, if you're trying to be great in your in, in our, in our world with nationalism, USA, USA, no. God Almighty, God hey, Almighty, hey, Amen. Hey, That's who wants to be in effect. Never forget. Never forget that. We're not, we're not alongside the United States of America. We are at odds with that government. Literally speaking, really said that the, the governments of this world and the kingdom of God do not align themselves. We are opposed to the government because even you, as we said earlier, the the governments of this world uses power to lower over each other. Whereas in the kingdom power is used to edify and to empower other people. 
United States of America is not found, it's not founded on that. And capitalism lines up nowhere in history, nowhere in you see in scripture that capitalism makes the, 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 the kingdom of God. No social Christ of Nazareth was not a capitalist. <laughs> right. And we have to really embrace that reality. You can't be a capitalist and be a, a Christian. Well, it doesn't work like that. And that so, part, and that's possibly, isn't it? Because if you go by the now, I want to put this in perspective. I'm just asking. I didn't mean to interrupt you on that. I'm just saying, oh, yeah. if you take the talents that he gave those people, he gave one person one talent, right? And that was money he gave them. He gave somebody two talents. And he gave one person, what, five talents, right? And, and he sat there and left them to take their talents and be profitable or fruitful in it. And when, when he, remember when he came back? Right. One guy sit there and say, Lord, you gave me two talents. Well, I actually started off with the first one, didn't he? The guy who he gave five talents to, didn't he? He, he, said, he said, Lord, you gave me five talents. I got 10 talents now. And he rewarded him. He sit there and said, you, 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 you profitable. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this. You know, he gave him rewards. He gave him more things. Then the other one said, I had two talents. I'm just talking about that. I'm just saying, the capital yeah, yeah. work in the kingdom of God because he said, he, he wants you to be a good steward. He wants you to be profitable in what you do. So he tells the rich young ruler to sell all that you owe and give it to the poor. And then when you have rich in the kingdom. So no, where, was the capital, where was the capitalism in that? I, I understand what you're saying. If you go in back if we go, if we go by that scripture, that whole chapter, he said that the other guy said there said we gave all, Lord. The, the disciples said we gave all. He just said you you will get your houses and you'll get your other things back. Hundredfold. Or he said right? you get back a hundredfold, and then the age it's to come, right, chunk right, life. Right, it's not the sweet by and by either. It was so the, the question becomes: What is he investing in? And what's his what's his currency? And the currency wasn't material wealth. The currency was human soul. And he kind of gives us that thing. He came to seek and say that which was lost. The Roman government had more money than anybody else on the planet when Jesus came. But what was Jesus seeking? He was seeking. He was seeking not material wealth. He was seeking human soul. Then yeah. it would that none should perish, but that all should, yeah. all should be saved, right? But don't, so, don't forget after he had treasure. He had a treasure. If we look at Cap, he, he rendered unto Caesar that which is Caesar unto God, where which is God. Which kingdom was everlasting? It was the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God. I mean, he has all the material stuff anyway. He can speak it in the kind of bad. So his his investment, as far as our material wealth and stuff is concerned, look what he put off in order to gain us. All the wealth that he had, all of all of the, the prestige, all the everything, he became nothing that he might gain these human souls. So our acquisition is really the real estate right now is not material stuff it's not a land it's a person so our then that's i guess that's the hard part about what we do for a living is that all that we have is expendable for the sake of one soul i think i think that well, i want to make sure that and the reason i started this title of today by faith we are set to change the world we need to make sure we are, the world knows what we're changing to but I, and I, I agree with that. You know, in the sense that what are we trying to change? Are we exactly. trying to change the social status? Or are we trying to change the nature of that person? Right. Now, look, Elder, what I want to do, let's get what the scripture said, what you're supposed to do, right? And and then you can we can we can spin from there. Uh, so if you can read this for us, I appreciate it. This is the Great Commission. After it was the appeal to the eleven that they said me, and upbraided them with them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. And this is Mark chapter them. 16. So because some of the people can't they can't see the scriptures. Oh, okay. They can't see it. Okay, Mark what, uh, what you need to, to to set the tone. This is after Jesus returned. This right okay. here, this is the uh this is the end of Mark chapter 16 after he came after yeah, after, after the resurrection. After he rose so, so they that needs to be stated to put this in content. Right, he you left. You know what I'm saying? He left us with a commission. Yes. Yeah. This was this was after he fulfilled the law. Exactly. Yes, sir. After he appeared to the eleven, I'm sorry. Afterwards, he appeared to the eleven, 
as they said at me, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Yes, sir. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. Every, every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Yes. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Well, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In yes. my name they shall cast out devils. Uh, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. Now, see, I'm saying, Elder, that, that, that commission, right? Look at the commission. The commission is, that, yes, say, we preach the gospel so they can receive salvation in Christ Jesus. And then he also talked about the fact that this is one of your favorite ones about lay a hand on the sick and they shall recover. These are signs that follow those who believe, right? And and, and Christ did it. While Christ was walking this earth, didn't he, didn't he do some wonderful things besides leaving the world, right? Um, can, can you pull that scripture back up? Because I think something that, that we, we often speak over, uh, in that scripture uh -huh. we need to, to pay attention to because in 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 1614 it says afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they said at me and upbraided them with their unbelief <laughs> in hardness of heart right <laughs> okay so there was those who had not seen Jesus yet but you're talking about the eleven because of this this statement Right. And it said that they had unbelief yeah. and hardness of heart uh -huh. because the, the 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 eleven had already started preaching the gospel, uh -huh. but people still had unbelief and hardness of heart. Right. But it took Jesus to unbraid them. Yes, sir. Get your act together. Because they believed not right. them which had seen him after he was risen. So basically, after the, the the disciples had started with the gospel, prior to this commission of Christ, it didn't work. Now you said, in a different perspective, you said they were preaching uh, after Jesus passed away and wrote well, after After, well, what this is saying in content is that with Jesus, he appeared unto the eleven. Yes. As they said at me. So they were they were there getting ready to to uh break bread. Break bread. Well, these are the disciples, right? Those yeah. are the eleven disciples. The, right? These are the eleven disciples. Right. Yeah, okay. So but it didn't say he he upbraided them, yes. which are the eleven disciples. He well, said he Un upbraided them with their unbelief and harness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Now that's that's interesting saying is that I always look at that because remember Thomas was one of the other people that had unbelief unbelief. Remember that? Thomas had unbelief. Is that this this particular time though? Yeah. I think it's that setting too. After he risen. This is the same setting. Yeah. I think it was it was in that time frame because not all of them saw him get up. And the but ones yeah. that did it's see not. him, they went and told some. Right. But they not all of the twelve or the eleven got the news at the same time. And them that didn't didn't actually see him doing through Thomas didn't believe it. And that's what he's saying right here. He says, Y'all y'all don't believe the scriptures yeah. of what I said. Exactly. And, and, and he went off on them because of that. Right, and the other thing too was that they couldn't go preach the gospel until after the day of Pentecost. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, Ang Lucia, so um, the uh, wait. Yeah, until they do power on high. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, but so, the, praise God, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's good stuff, there. I think. Thank God, that was good. One. So, so my thing is, yeah, this, it's, it's important. When you look at this, he said he he unbraided them with their unbelief and harness of heart. So, what did he do? He appeared. He, okay, he, 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 he rebuked them. That's basically what he's talking about. He said, "Y'all, listen, yeah. have, listen. I I've been with you guys for three years. There's more than just those eleven, but you eleven, you apostles. I was ministering to you for three and a half years. 
I was demonstrating to you the power of God. I even sent you out two by two, and y'all came back bragging on how y'all cast out devils and, and, and did some wonderful things. And I told you I was going to die. But I told you that I'm going to rise up again in three days. And, and some of y'all, look, when, 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 that, when Mary came back and said he's alive, she's the one who gave the first gospel. Yeah. Uh, only two of them, and look, it's how many, how many, how many uh, apostles we had? 11, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was 12 total, but Judas lost his place. Hey, look, Albert, how many ran to the two? Uh, two. Just two? Yeah. Yeah, you catch my point. Only, only two read to the two. Yeah, yeah. But but I just wanted to point out that it took Jesus. They had to seek Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For yes, them sir. to have their hearts unbraided for their because to change their unbelief and hardness of heart right. to belief and unhardness of heart. Right. So in my mind, I, why I was saying this is so important is these people in the world have to see Jesus in nice. us. Nice, yeah. nice preaching. Yeah. They have to see, because if the disciples Come on, had to see Jesus, then obviously this world needs to see Jesus. Yeah. And, and you now. That's what you yeah. see Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You. Okay. Can, I'd like to say something in there because I think that's a great segue. Amen. into my thinking of what uh, what Myron has just said and that they have to see him yes. you see what I'm saying and, and that's not that's not in the fact that um, you're not drinking, smoking, cursing carousing, cohabitating fornicating that's, I don't think that's what that means when you see him I know that's what we've reduced it to yes. because we've watered it down because mm -hmm. we're not living in what we should be living in. Right. So now we've reduced it down to what we're doing to be the standard. Yeah. But all he did from the time he got here to the time he left was preached that the kingdom of God had come. And yeah. he demonstrated that by the signs and wonders following. Amen. And they saw him. Amen. And so my point to this whole thing is, is this. I'm very leery when I read scriptures and I and I and I jump on to subtitles. Now, man has labeled this the Great Commission, mm -hmm. and we repeat that the Great Commission is if we uh, elevated this above preaching the kingdom. Well, Jesus preached the kingdom. That's the only message he ever preached from the time he started preaching. That's the first thing he ever said was repent repent for the kingdom of God is at hand to after he resurrected the Bible said he came back to them after those 40 days 50 days or whatever and he preached unto them about the, the things concerning the kingdom on his way out that's all he ever preached but then now somebody said this is the Great Commission and so now we pointed all to this as this this is the Great Commission and this is what we're supposed to be doing and this is our main commission because some man says that. I don't see nowhere in the Bible where it points to and highlights this as our primary focus when it was never Jesus's. Yeah, if we preach the kingdom and then demonstrate the, in the word following me, then they will believe that the kingdom has come and those yeah. signs shall, and these signs shall follow just like they yeah. followed him and the disciples after they preached the kingdom then they heal the sick, they raise the dead, they cast out devils. Follow the pattern. It's all through his ministry. So I'm just saying, as a different way of looking at this, is this somebody tell us this is the Great Commission, and now that's what we say? Or is this really the Great Commission? I just like to say, just like they say, the prodigal son. Um, when the Bible said it was a story about a father and two sons, they pointed us to the one that was walking in darkness or the things that were doing against God. But is that what the Bible was trying to point out to us? I don't think so. He was trying to show us both sons equally. And so I think we have to be leery of Bibles that kind of tell us what a passage is, what is about. Let the Bible speak to us and not some man's labeling of certain passages. I do admit that in some places 
it does help the understanding if we don't understand the context of what's being taught on certain things. I'm not saying it's all bad, but I'm not saying it's all good either. I'm just saying as a point of reference, we need to take a look at those things and decide for ourselves. If we had read it without any subtitles, would we have come back to the conclusion and said, hey, this passage right here, this is the Great Commission. I don't know. Well, you know, that's 